Okay, good afternoon guys. A couple of minutes early, but we might as well uh, kick off. Let's just do a quick instant poll, check everyone can hear the volume correctly. Put that on your screens now. Let me know if the sound is perfect, too loud or too low. Standard settings, so it should be fine for everybody. Okay, uh, majority of people are saying it's, it's perfect. Uh, for people who say it's too low, maybe just uh, whack up the uh, the volume on your speakers. Good enough for me. Okay, guys, well, here we are again. Uh, another live non plan payroll session today. Um, going to be interesting. I think, obviously, it, what we can see in the markets, certainly the indices uh, look to be primed for a better than expected number. I've been listening to uh, a lot of the analysts, a lot of the, uh, the things being squawked um, this morning, and it looks like there's a real bullish um, edge to this figure today. Uh, again, always be very, very skeptical and careful about these things just because, um, you know, the so-called analysts, you know, they, the people out there, doesn't mean, you know, that the figure is going to be better than expected. You know, I've probably predicted over 130, 140 non-farm payrolls over the years, and I've only very rarely got it spot on. And even if you do, it doesn't mean you've got to necessarily make money. So I would say just have an open mind as to what the figure is going to be, um, today. Again, if it is worse than expected, remember the market is primed for a better figure, then we might see a very big overreaction. But I think, you know, as always, what we've learned to do in these sessions is, you know, take a step back. You know, we've proved, you know, many, many a times that you don't have to necessarily be fastest, fastest finger first. We can certainly wait for the first, you know, five minute candle to print and, and you know, make some money, um, you know, in the next 20, 30, 40 minutes worth of trading. So, Again, we've seen all sorts of scenarios. We've seen systems freeze up. We've seen, you know, uh, the, the you know the uh, intertrader system go down. We've seen meta uh, trader go down. Um, all different things can happen. But I think the the important thing for me to to reiterate is that you know we don't have to take these things personally. For me, things like this, the non farm payroll, are always a bonus. Okay, um, if you make money, it's a bonus trade. Okay, we have to be prepared. We have to understand what the data means, how it can move the markets. But really, it's just an opportunity to make extra money. You should be making money day in, day out on your good, solid technical trades. So this fundamental data is something that will move the markets you know, aggressively today, regardless of, of what the figure comes out as. And it's an opportunity to get involved in that volatility for a short period of time and profit. It's not where you should be baking your bread and butter money as a trader. Okay? So very important that we, we understand the risks and um the rewards that can be brought with, with trading data, but then to understand that that's just a very small part. My general rule is the 80-20 rule, that 80% of the time the markets move technically, 20% of the time it's down to fundamental data. But that fundamental data will trade uh, in a technical manner, so it's all part of the same thing in the bigger picture. Okay. So before I start, as always, the risk warning. Remember that spread betting and CFD trading both carry a high risk to capital with the possibility of losing more than initial investments. These products might be suitable for all investors not all intended for people over the age of 18. Please ensure you fully aware of the risks involved and necessarily seek independent financial advice. Again, educational only. Content of the webinar is personal opinion of the moderator, not in trade.com. The content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. We advise to discuss your CIFRA requirement to an independent financial advisor prior to any bet. Intrader.com is not responsible and disclaims all liability of the contents and comments made during the session. Okay, so again, apologies if you've heard this um, this before. Uh, again, we have new people joining these sessions all the time. I'll go through it as uh, as quickly and concisely as I can. So remember, there's two types of uh, economic releases that we break data down into. So there's leading indicators and lagging indicators. So leading indicators offer preliminary signs of potential up and coming change to the business cycle. These are the things like consumer expectations, building permits, money supply. Then lagging indicators take a little bit more time to filter through to the economy, uh, and these are things like unemployment-related figures, CPI and PPI. So again, CPI and PPI are going to be very important in the next few quarters, especially for the UK, I would say, because I believe that the UK will be first to move on interest rates. So, you know, th these are things we have to look at. You know, the consumer producer price index, we know inflation's high, we know inflation's above target, and the only way I know to control inflation is to raise interest rates. Obviously, we've kept interest rates artificially low, um, most countries have, in order to stimulate growth. Has it really happened? I don't think so. I think it's been a, you know, a real shortfall of Mark Carney and the Bank of England you know, to, to, to approach the, the problem in the way they have. Basically, we've just recapitalized the banks. The banks are still not lending to, to small businesses. And all, we see, all the growth we're seeing at the UK, again, it's coming from the consumer. It's coming from people borrowing you know, uh, 
cheap uh, money with the low interest rates, releasing equity in the houses, it's not really being stimulated in the right kind of way. So unfortunately, don't want to be all doom and gloom, but I don't see anything good happening. You know, the, the, we're heading for another crash. We're heading for another property bubble. Something's going to give, okay? Well, all we've done is print a lot of free money. Nobody's really taken any kind of pain. And that just, does, it just doesn't cut it. That just isn't what's going to... Um, save the world. So something, you know, something big is going to happen. It might have been the UK, it might be one of the Eurozone countries. You know, again, it might be in the US, but uh, having printed all this free money and expected, you know, we've got to get out of jail card free and everything's fine. I, I just can't see how realistically anybody who's sane or has any kind of semblance of how you know, the economies and cyclical nature of things work could just think we're out of the woods. So all this talk that, the, you know, the European Union is back on track, for me, is just nonsense. But Again, that's that, what, what do I what do I know? Okay, oh, it's just my opinion, just uh, as we're all entitled to have. But when we talk about there's two main types. There's really a third, okay, and that is the non-farm payroll. So again, we we'll break into lagging and leading indicators, but also into inflationary and growth figures. So really, non-farm payroll is, is the key growth figure, and we call it coincidental indicator because really it gives you a snapshot of how the U.S. is doing right now, and really. That's why it is such a, a volatile figure and so difficult to trade because I don't know of a, a good consistent way of, of predicting the non-farm payroll figure. It's just too big. It's just too, it's just too complex in the way it's put together and it's very, very hard. But because it is such a good gauge of how the U.S. is doing, and again, remember, the U.S., the biggest consuming nation on earth, sets the tone for the global economy. So the more jobs that the U.S. have, the more prosperity it is, the more money people have, the more confidence there is. Etc. 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 So good non-farm payroll generally sends indices up uh, and, and sends things like gold down. Now we've had a very different non-farm um, payroll experience over the last maybe two or three because it's all been about what's going to happen in the background in the U.S. Okay, so it's all about what's happening uh, with quantitative easing. So the better the, the non-farm payrolls were. Almost it was like people were expecting the quantitative easing to be tapered and that therefore was sending the markets down because less free money was going to be pumped into the economy. So we've already had, you know, the, 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 the Fed come out and say they've, they've cut the, um, the, the quantitative easing tapering, but it's really by the minimal amount they could do. So the, it is still that, that, that stimulus being pumped into the economy. So will a good non-farm payroll today mean it's more likely that the Fed will, will cut and, and further taper the quantitative easing. I mean, that's something we have to consider. So a very, very strong figure today could see an initial spike in the markets and then a sell-off, whereas a, a bad figure today could see the market sell off and then go back up because it will be less likely that quantitative easing will be tapered further. Okay, so it's never just quite as simple as, you know, high figure buy, low figure sell. You have to think about the underlying implications. So we're still very, very wary and we're still very reliant in the markets with, with this stimulus both in the UK and the US okay, and the Eurozone. So we have to make a judgment call right now if a, if a good non-farm payroll is going to make quantitative easing tapering more likely, less likely, or it's going to stop being a factor at all. Okay, And we're just going to trade off the back of a good or bad non-farm payrolls. So as I say, you know, you have to understand everything that goes into the, you know, to why people are making decisions based upon this figure today. It's not just quite as simple as the figure itself, it's the other implications that, that will be felt in the markets with people making trading decisions based upon um, political and economic uh, results of this figure today. So non-farm payroll, what is it? Well, it's an important A, it's the biggest figure of the month, it's the biggest figure on the calendar. It's as simple as that. It has been for a long time, and until interest rates you know, start to move, then there's no other figure that can really touch it. Um, it represents a total number of working age persons in all professions, except for government employees, household employees, not for profit, and, and not for farm employees. That's why it's called non-farm payrolls. Okay, so a little bit of history. So it represents pretty much 80% of the American workforce that's currently employed. So it, it, it stands to reason that it's a very, very important figure. And the more jobs, as I've already explained, the better the situation is. So uh, it, it's not a tough one to interpret, but it's certainly a very tough figure to predict. Other things that count in the market, as we know, and, and now unknown for peril will probably remain number one for me for even when interest rates start to move. But interest rates after that 
the interest rate announcements, I do an FX Street, I do the Bank of England, and I do the Fed. Okay, so th these are things that you have to turn up for and you have to understand because these things will move the markets just as much as non-farm payroll, and especially the meetings. And uh, if we do get an unexpected interest rate, uh, that really does make the markets go absolutely wild. GDP, as we know, a very, very broad figure. Um, US, UK, Eurozone GDP is something to keep an eye on. And again, the CPI and PPI, when inflationary figures come back into vogue, and they will do, you know, don't get me wrong, we won't always be looking for growth figures. You know, five, six years ago, all, all as a trader, we would do is listen to John claude Triche, you know, listen to um, him and talk about price stability and try and understand when, when rates would move. So the, these figures will come back into vogue. These things are cyclical. It doesn't matter what the Bank of England do, what the ECB, or what the Fed do. They're cyclical. You cannot keep interest rates low artificially forever. You can't. It's impossible. It doesn't matter what anybody says. It doesn't matter what the Fed say or how. They're just blokes at the end of the day. People are making these decisions. Okay, they're just men. They're not. You know, they're not. Everyone likes to think that they know the answers. They don't. Okay? They don't have any answers. All they're doing is the best they can with the situation. So when interest rates, when the market dictates they have to go up, interest rates will have to move. There's nothing the Fed can do about it. They can keep them low, you know, and they have the power to keep them low. But these things are cyclical. They'll get to a point in in, in, in the market with the money supply, with, with the way the world is functioning, that you cannot keep interest rates that low. And it will just come. Okay, so it's absolutely inevitable. Interest rates will rise. So before the figure, we generally see a tight range. Well, not today. We've certainly seen um, a big sell-off in cable this morning and uh, a, a bid going to the, the major indices. So it looks like the, the market is primed for a better than expected figure here. We'll go through the figure in, in some detail in a few minutes. So I'd say don't trade before the figure. Um, I, I traded a little bit this morning, uh, took a little bit of money, you know, nothing to write home about. But again, just trading small size and just getting on the back of you know, some, of the, some of these moves. Uh, look at the market reaction and see if the bias is formed. I think we can safely say there's been a, an upside uh, bias to today's figure. And get your levels in play, you know, because again, the markets have moved up, you know, not very significantly, but you know, they, they're certainly trending upwards. So see if your levels are still valid. Okay, so valid levels that you may have been preparing for today might have already been tested. Okay, so you have to rethink around what's happened already and what can potentially happen after the figure is released. Three main ways of trading any kind of fundamental data. I don't know of any other way. If, if you do, please tell me. Uh, taking a position before the market releases the data, so it's basically a punt. Setting opposite orders outside the current range, uh, so that's trying to catch the highs and lows uh, with working your order book. Or just trading the aftermath is what I do. You know, wait for the figure, you know, try and get in the initial move, and then any kind of retracement or continuation pattern after that. So trading the position uh, before the figure. As I said, you know, I'm not being disrespectful. It is a punt, okay? I don't know anybody that can predict an on-farm payroll with any kind of real consistency. So, it, you know, it's it's just taking a view and buying or selling before the figure comes out. Um, you've got the problems with the volatility prior to the release, managing your stops, and certainly what happens if you're wrong. Uh, as I say, I, I probably predicted over 140 non-farm payrolls, and very, very rarely do I get it spot on. Uh, I've traded, I have traded before the figure, and I've lost just as much money as I've made. So uh, to me, there is no edge uh, in, in taking a position before the figure. Holding the figure both ends, now that's placing open to limit orders in the outside the range. This is a much more uh, scientific, much more technical analysis based way of trading. And it, I've seen a lot of people make money over the years doing this. I personally don't do it, but not to say it isn't a good way of trading. So all you do is set orders, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 ticks outside the range, on, on key support, key resistance, you're looking for the market to spike, as it generally does after the figure, fill your orders, then come back to fair value. So I would say if you are a technical trader um, and, and you're comfortable working orders, then this is a good way to trade. Obviously, don't put your orders too close together or too close to the market, because uh, if you put them too close together, you might get filled on several orders you don't want. Too close to the market, you just get filled on everything and end up getting churned around and losing money. But if you uh, are a technical trader and you do like um, you know, picking the extremes of, of the market you trade, then this is a very good way of making money. I don't know why I put that chart in. I will take that out. So trading the aftermath is a third option, and that really, for me, is, is real trading. So again, we can try and be fastest finger first, you know, trade the initial figure, the initial volatility. Or again, as, we've, as I've demonstrated over the years now, um, generally we let the first five-minute candle print and do a retracement or continuation. Fibonacci will come into play, and 
again, I'll, I'll show you. I did a, a, a session over the Bank of England um, a couple of days back in FX Street. And I said, you know, we've seen this spike in, in, um, in the FTSE. I'll draw a Fibonacci on. Two things will happen. If we significantly close above the 50%, we'll make a new high. If we close below the 50%, we'll make a new low. And then I'll show you the chart. We significantly made that low. So Fibonacci is something that is absolutely essential. You have to use it in the right way. And it's, it's perfect for trading data, especially the first five-minute candle, because you get that first five-minute spike. And you know if something goes up, <clears throat> there are a lot of people like us trading it, so day traders, so it will come down. And Fibonacci, for me, is just the best way of understanding how markets overextend and, and come back to fair value. Okay, so we're going to go to the, uh, the, the live charts now. Um, I've done a whole series of charts here today. I'm going to look at uh, cable, gold, and the FTSE for a change. I'm going to stay away from the S&P today uh, just, because, well, just because I can. Uh, I, I, I believe there's better opportunities in these other products. And what I've done is um, I've kind of color-coded things and made it easier for people to understand. So I'll just start the uh, desktop sharing now so you'll be able to see my screen in a second. Okay, guys. One second. So you should be able to see my chart any second now. Okay. Does this... can, it, can everyone see the charts or can you still see the chat window? Somebody just let me know if you can see the charts. Uh, can anybody hear me? Okay, guys. I think we might have a slight problem here. Right. Okay, one second, guys. Let me just try something else. One second, guys. Okay, guys, I've just tried something else now. Let's give it a couple of seconds to load, guys. It's just um, it's a little bit temperamental on Novia. Okay, you should be able to see three charts now. Right, okay, thanks, Sandra. Cheers, David. Thanks, Mark. Okay, so as I said, what we're going to look at today is the pound against the uh, the dollar. Okay, so we see that big sell-off uh, earlier this morning. Then we're going to look at gold in the middle, and then the UK FTSE um, to the right-hand side. So we can see there's been a big bid. Now, I've tried to make things a little bit easier. Okay, they can look a little bit complicated charts, but again, it's all personal preference. I'm trying to make them as clean as I can. I've got some basic things we should all be looking at. Okay, so look at the RSI. Okay, RSI, make it very clear. Below 30 is oversold. Above 70 is overbought. Uh, the demarker indication is just another bull bear reversal that I like and I use. So again, you can see how the market was ready for a bear reversal when it breaks through the 70 level, gets to the 50, gets to the 30, market comes down. The little green dots are parabolic czar, stop and, and reverse. So these are good levels where, you, where your stop should be, but also show a good direction where the market can go. If it's below, the market goes up. If it's above, the market comes down. So I've got Bollinger Bands. I've got my straight line Fibonacci's, so these are very, very clear now. Uh, red, a sell, green, a buy. The 50% key level is dotted. So, as I say, if we close below the 50%, we generally make a new low in the range. Happened. In gold, yeah, close above the 50%. Yeah, not made the new high yet, but it's looking like gold could certainly do that. Uh, again, in the, in the FTSE, we've, uh, we've closed above. 50%, so I definitely see uh, 6, 7, 7, 5, spot 80 tested. Once we reject um, closing above these, then we're going to get back down to the 50 at 6, 7, 5, 8, uh, and you'll, again, maybe down to the 100 and down to the 161, spot 8. So plenty of key levels. So they, they, we see a, a, a really good non farm payroll. The market takes it well. We can see the FTSE get to 6, 8, 1, 9, uh, spot 30. Uh, likewise, we've got big levels in gold. I would say 1, 2, 2, um, Nine on the downside, one two two six, uh, and certainly one two twenty 
uh, which I personally think is going to be hit uh, at some point in the next few days in, in gold trading. If we see gold take a, a bid, it's going to get to 1, 2, 4, 8, spot 30. Uh, some big levels, again, like how this Fibonacci's worked on, on cable. We've hit the 4, 2, 3, spot 6 retracement. 1, 2, 3, 4 attempts. The market's bounced up. I don't know if it's finished just yet. We've got some big levels down here at 1, spot 3, um, 7, 80, and then nothing down until 1, spot 3, um, 6, 3, 0, 9, 0. So plenty of room on the upside and downside in the charts today. So, um, again, it's going to be interesting to see you know, what, what the market does. If we see a poor non-farm payroll, we can see all these, these gains in the FTSE are raised uh, quite easily. Uh, so again, I'm, I'm keeping the three charts open of the things I, I feel uh, we have the best edge on today. I mean, is there anything that people want to look at? Is there any, any anything we can go through for other people that are that are that are here today? Um, I can go through any chart. It'll only take a few seconds. So, does anybody want to look through any other product? What else are you trading today, guys? Does anybody else want uh, some some ideas to support resistance, key levels to to be involved at? Okay, is that Ray asking for the DAX? Yeah, DAX. Okay, well, let's just pull the DAX up quickly. I'm going to go through some others quickly. We're now on uh, Intertraders, MetaTrader. So they've, they've changed everything around. So it's now things are called all sorts of the, the Euro 30. I don't know who came up with that. That's very, very uh, silly. Okay, so in the DAX, the same scenario. We've seen a lot of buying come into the market. Again, see how the Fibonacci's work. Close below the 50% makes some new lows. Okay, so I would say that realistically, the DAX, um, if we see a very strong figure today, then we could see the DAX get to 9627 spot 80. If we see a bad non fan payroll, then certainly the 50% uh, the is going to be key, uh, 9498, and then definitely 9470 and 9434. The only real kind of technical level that I've got in is 9426. So potentially, if we break these highs, you know, we could, we could see 100 tick up move. Uh, more likely, if we see a, a bad figure, we could see easily 100 tick down move. So we, we're quite nicely primed uh, in the market. Okay, although we've seen this this buying emphasis coming to the markets this morning, we have still got enough momentum within this figure right now to push it up to these levels up here and to push it down to these levels down here. So realistically, for me. I would I'd see what the market does around 9545. Uh, if it starts to gain some serious momentum, then you've got a lot of upside room before it finds any resistance. So we, we've still got plenty of room to buy on the upside, I would say, today. That is for sure. So that's the DAX. What else have we got? We've got the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Okay. New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Well, Trading towards the bottom of the range now. Again, we've still got quite a long way to go before this particular Fibonacci is, is, is made. Again, we've closed below the 50%. Uh, surprise, surprise, the market's making new lows. Uh, we you know, hit the 261 to 8 retracement. So um, below that, we've got a, a key daily level down here. So we've got you know, another 40 ticks or so before this, this level at 0 0.81683 could be hit. So quite a lot of resistance down here. The more lines are closely added together, the more resistance. So if we do see a sell-off in the New Zealand dollar against the US dollar, we've got some big targets down here. But again, if we sell down to it, I'd be buying them back. Uh, on the upside, again, just retracing where we've come from. So I'd say the 100% is certainly key if we see the New Zealand uh, dollar come into favour today. And certainly um, 0 0.82974 will be a key upside target today. Okay, that 50% where it all kind of kicked off on the way down. Um, the US dollar czar, okay. I'm always amazed by people that pick these amazingly random purse to trade. Uh, you know, again, it's just, I always go with the self-fulfilling prophecy, so I'll try and stick to what everyone else will be looking at today. But yeah, we'll certainly go through one of them too. So I'll do the dollar czar, where is that? Oh, I don't know, have you ever done into trader? Yeah, dollar czar. So dollars are, again, Fibonacci, we've closed below the 50% now. I mean, again, guys, uh, it's staggering that you know, people don't use Fibonacci in their everyday trading. Okay, we're trading below the 100% now, so got a very big target here at 10, 10 spot 7455 would be the 161. Then all the way down to 10 spot 6941, uh, again, would be the 2618. Uh, lots and lots of resistance between uh, 
10 spot 82 and 84 so uh, if the market gets up here that might be a good area to sell uh, so really we're kind of kind of mid-range is certainly a, a downward bias to the, the dollar against the the uh, the brand today but um again I would say that all these these green lines down here would be good areas to buy although the market's trending downwards over the last kind of two or three days of trading the overall trend for this is certainly up so I'll be buying dips that is for sure Okay, um, U.S. crude oil. Okay, an interesting one. U.S. crude oil. Well, let's do we'll do Brent. Okay, so Brent, big big sell off. So you could even do a Fibonacci in a different way. The Fibonacci of the hourly view is working very very well. We've closed more than fifty percent, and look, one, two, three, four, five, six selling candles. A bit of a bit of a fake out here on the bottom. And you, you buy oil back. So key levels here today are definitely 106.31 uh, and, and 108.31. But you can do a Fibonacci of the entire down move. You know, it's again you can see again how Fibonacci comes into play. We haven't really, you know, made it back to the 50%. We haven't made it above the 23.6. So really, we, we're still going to see a lot more bears come into the market and push oil down. So any spikes up in oil, I'd be selling, expecting oil to to go further down. Okay, guys, um, let me just go through the figure. Okay, so we're expecting a figure of 200,000 that's expected um, on the a Bloomberg poll. That's what I generally take it from. Earlier on in the month on FX Street, I predicted 170. So I've revised that up to 221 today in the light of uh, the market talking up a better figure. On the high side, got a range of 225,000. On the low side, 120,000. A prior figure of 203. The unemployment rate's expected at 7% today. Obviously, a very tight range as usual, 6.9 to 7.1. Private payrolls expected 189,000. On the low side, very low at 120,000. And on the high side, 220,000. So I'm expecting a figure of 221 today. So the call will be buy, 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 sell, 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 based upon uh, my, my view for the indices. So a buy will be a good figure, a sell will be a bad figure. Now, I'm not telling you to buy. I'm not telling you to sell. I'm just saying how the market will interpret this figure. <laughs> so, um, again, we've got to still uh, think about the um, the quantitative easing side. If, if any effect you know, of a good figure today is going to mean more tapering is likely. Remember, the market has been bought up this morning, so we'll have a lot of people that will be taking profit out of long positions that can make the market initially spike down, even if we see a good figure. Uh, as I said, I'm going to concentrate on the FTSE. Uh, today, because I think that's where the best opportunities lie. The majority of, of indices are up. We're up 57 points in the in the UK, 57, uh, 68 points in Germany. The S&P is now up 85. So let's just qu quickly bring up the S&P, and I'll just go through that. Um, okay, so again. We're coming towards the top of the uh, of where I've drawn the Fibonacci from on the um, on the hourlies. So we've seen one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, nearly fifteen hours of buying. So what goes up has to come down. So if the market rejects one eight four nine and one eight four six, we're definitely going to try and get back to that fifty percent, which is down here at one eight uh, three nine spot nine. Five. So no matter how good the figure is today, I'm going to be selling high and expecting the market to come back down. We've just seen too much, too much buying happen. Okay, the market is definitely overbought. Okay, guys, it's three minutes for the figure now, so uh, time to get our, our charts up, our, our products open, understand our risk award principles today, understand the uh, the amount of size we're going to be trading. Well, Peter, I mean, again, it's. <sighs> It's very difficult to, to 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 say categorically if you know 15 pip gains in the last 15 minutes is significant. I think what's significant is that we haven't seen a red candle yet, so there's nobody shorting um, the main indices, certainly in the UK, before this figure. So everyone is primed for a better than expected figure. So as I said, profit taking will have to come into effect at some point. If we look at the RSI, we're at 78. Okay, so we're massively overbought. The demarcation indicator at 92. It only goes up to 100. So we're due for a bear reversal at some point. So, again, you know, if people buy the market right now, maybe you're buying at the absolute top. When we've seen 
you know, gold. Look at gold. I mean, gold. Look, gold's going right off. Uh, gold, gold selling right off, guys. Massive, massive selling gold. Uh, I'm going to buy at one two two six if it gets down to as low as that. But maybe this is an indication that it is going to be a much, much better figure than expected. I mean, look, these these moves in gold are very, very vicious. I mean, we saw that, you know, spike down of nowhere. We've dropped a hundred ticks. So maybe. Again, we saw a massive uh, 8,000 contract sell in gold uh, a couple of days back. So maybe somebody knows something we don't. Um, should have bought that low down there. But again, we're going to have to wait for the figure now, guys. It's only a minute now. 200 expected. Okay, guys, get ready. Okay, Euro's getting sold off as well. Remember, we're going to see some massive volatility here, guys. So be very, very careful. It's 30 seconds before the figure. 200 expected. Buy, buy, buy. Sell, sell, sell with a call. Got to see some big moves, guys. Be very careful. Do not over risk. Okay, guys, get ready. 200 expected. Ten seconds. Gold, gold spiked. 74,000, 74,000 buying gold, selling, selling, buying gold, selling. Okay, buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. Sell, sell, sell. Okay, buying gold, buying gold. Having to massive, massive, massive surprise here, guys. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah, but yeah, okay, guys. Gonna have to just uh, be quiet here for a little minute, guys. The market is going absolutely wild. Okay, so a lot, uh, a lot worse than expected, though, guys. Okay, massive, massive, massive uh, unexpected figure, though, guys. Can't seem to get on side. Massive, massive. Buying gold, selling stocks. Okay. Still don't understand why this isn't quite going, guys. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, no taper, maybe. Gonna have to just uh, be a bit calm here. Okay, so massively, massively low figure there. You know, all expecting a high figure. So eight thousand, all the revisions are coming in, so on side in, oh, on side, off side, on side, off side. I'm I'm keeping my view. I mean it's in, I'm staying short the stock, staying long gold for now. Okay. Oh, very, very tough trading decisions now guys. Um gold's coming back. Stocks have still not gone. I'm amazed stocks have still not gone. Um, so still remaining uh, long gold. Okay, crazy figures here, guys. Crazy figures. Okay, so still staying short the stocks. Just can't seem to get a break just yet. So. Gold doesn't want to go up anymore. Okay, so <sighs> okay, can sell sell some more footsie. Oh, very very difficult. This very difficult, guys. So this is where you've got to be patient now. You know, you've kept your view. You've 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 got to you know got to be brave. I mean, okay, we're just 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 about turn into some profit now. You know, again, being very very patient with this. Um, 
So, okay, FTSE's going down now, gold's going up. All right, so we're back in profit now. Okay, sold out my gold for some profit. I'm going to buy back the FTSE, just see if we test a little bit lower, get down to 6733 we'd like to see. Um, very, we just want to see these lows hitting again in, in, in the FTSE. Seven, six, seven, three, three, four, zero will be a nice target. Just struggling to get down there. Okay, just need to start hitting these lows again. What? Be careful these big spike backs. Gold's not really going. We're out of the gold. We've got some profit out of gold finally. Okay, we need these lows to be hitting the FTSE now. When I see these big jumps, that's what you want to see. These big, hard, solid, you know, or get all these longs out of the market. Get them all smashed out of the market. Everyone that was long into the figure, now we've seen a terrible non-farm payroll. There we go. There we go. There we go. So, two, two fifty, three hundred pounds on side. Taking that nice bit of profit. Okay, so, didn't do very well on gold, to be honest. Uh, held it as long as I could. I should have bought more, uh, but we've made two hundred and eighty pounds live. So, could have done better, guys. Could have done better. Should have, um, gold's now going, but it was just so, so, I mean, gold now, again, maybe even a sell at 1, 2, 4, 8, 30. It's going to start hitting higher. So, we should have made some more money. Should have bought more gold at the bottom. Again, very, very difficult when you see these, uh, you know, these, these hugely, you know, um, out, of the un out of the unexpected figures. But we held on. We didn't, you know, we didn't get too greedy. We didn't overextend ourselves. FTSE now is going to look to hit that uh, 6733 level. We're nearly on it right now. If it breaks through that, then it's goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Vienna. Uh, gold again, the target is going to be 1248 spot 30. Um, so there we go. That, that's why I said, you know, we were going to focus on the FTSE and focus on everything else. I mean, the, the S&P has actually gone negative now, so it's just done a full uh, full test. test. We've tested uh, six. Again, we broke through that key level now, and then the FTSE should have held on, should have held on. But there we go, guys. You know, we, we can't always make the maximum amount of money we said. You know, we've we took a you know a couple of offside positions on side, so we've made good money today. Whew, tough, tough one, that, guys. Well, good to see that. Gary has made some money. Martin uh, has made some money. Alan uh, bought the minute by retracement on the euro. Um, leaving it open for half day now. Yeah, Peter, 14 points on the DAX. Decent start to the weekend. Well, that's what we want to see, guys. There we go. Uh, yeah, I can't make it any clearer, can I? You know, we, we've the, 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 the test came in, in the FTSE exactly where I said. We broke through and the market's already retracing from that. So um, a really good level that we've called in the FTSE. Uh, gold again. It, I should have held on to gold. To be honest, it's going to spike up now to one, two, four, eight, spot thirty. Uh, might have a sell if we, if we touch that level because uh, you know we've got another supporting level behind it at one, two, five, one, forty. Uh, look at the change in reversal. I told you the weekly level down here at one, six, um, three, seven, eighty was going to be a good point. Look at that. Look at that for a buy. Okay, so market has gone back up. We're already at the hundred percent. So if it doesn't get to the fifty percent, we're going to see the market move down. Watch for any spikes up in gold. Uh, it might be a little a little sell up of these levels up here. Um, again, very disappointed. I didn't hold on to that gold trade um, uh, for longer. But again, it's very very difficult when you see the market churning around. Uh, you know, being onside, being offside. You know, it, it's very very difficult even as a professional trader to to not take some money off the table. So like I said, we made two hundred and eighty pounds today. Um, nothing you know particularly to write home about. Uh, I'm trading very very small size. Uh, you know, realistically, because it's it's very very difficult to um to to keep everyone kind of you know engaged and also concentrate on uh, on being able to trade the markets. But you know, we made money in two markets today. Uh, everyone else seems to have made money. And again, it's all about being prepared. It's all about having your levels in play and knowing what the market could potentially do. Okay, Chris, according to right said Fred, I'm too sexy for my shirt. Good trade on the euro, dollar versus Japanese yen. Darts for you as well. Well, that's what it's all about, guys, isn't it? This is what it's all about. We've all turned up today, and in eight minutes, we've all made some good money. Hopefully, nobody's lost money today. But by being prepared, by having the confidence to hold on, again, you know, this is what we're trying to do. So any money we've made today is a bonus. It's back to the hard grind of uh, what's going to happen um, 
you know, in, in the coming weeks of trading, because again, with such a, a massive drop in non-farm payrolls, remember everyone's expecting this to be to be way up. Okay, I was calling it 170, and even I changed my view to 221, and it's come out, you know, it, it less than 100. So massive, massive shock to the market. So all these these bulls that are long are going to be getting hammered out of the market for the short term. Uh, but again, remember, such a bad non-farm payroll could lead. The, uh, and that's the end of quantitative easing tapering for now, and, and the Fed are probably going to have to make some tough calls uh, to what they're going to do. But a nice, nice trade in, in the FTSE. We, you know, we got out a little bit prematurely, but fine. You know, we could have hold on and made some more money at gold, but it didn't matter. We still made some money. Uh, perfect levels in in cable uh, from the lows to the high. Okay, so uh, it's been it's been a good session, guys. I think it's been great. So Alan, 218 five minutes, a good salary if you ask me. Absolutely, Alan. Yeah, again, we have to be respectful to the money and understand that, yeah, £280, okay, you know, it's, it's not going to change my world, but it, it's a lot of money to make in five minutes. And, you know, we've made it in a, in a fairly responsible manner and we've waited for the aftermath and we, we've traded well. So that's what we're here to do, okay? So Rockme's made £6, short in the FTSE. Okay, well, it doesn't matter, you know, £6 is £6. It's you paid your spread and you've made some money. That's what we're here to do. Okay, I mean, let, let, let's go on the five-minute charts then, okay, and just, just have a look at uh, what actually happened. Um, again, I, I, when, when it's so volatile, I keep, the, um, I keep the hourly charts on just so I can see any, any spikes. But So what you can do is, you know, look, the FTSE. Okay, so the first five minutes it sold off and came back. Let's do a, do a Fibonacci from the low to the high. So as long as we close below the 50%, a new low will be made. Okay, do the same in all the markets, okay? Do the same in gold. Do the same in in cable. You know, the, the, just just when I've done this, press Control Print Screen, okay, and paste that into a Word document. If we close above the 50%, yeah, significantly, we will make a higher high in cable. If we close below the 50% in gold, we will make a lower low. Okay, same in the FTSE. If we stay below this 50% significantly close below it, and, you, and we'll talk about the close on the hourlies and close on the 15 minutes, then we will make it down to 6.71450 in the FTSE, okay? Well, there we go, Mark. We've got some big boy traders here. We made 25 grand in, in, uh, in three minutes. Well, I'll, uh, I'll expect my Learjet to be, uh, to be sent over to Jersey, Mark, and... Uh, the uh, 2003 Don Perrineau will be on you tonight. Well, um, there we go, guys. So now we have the difficult part of deciding if, if that's your money for today I and mean, you put your feet up, watch the darts, and uh, enjoy your Friday afternoon, or if you think there's going to be more opportunities. Uh, a massive shock to the market, though. It, it, it's quite simple that that will, not, um, that will have some ramifications within the market because... Uh, such a low figure when everyone was talking up a better figure. That's when you see the biggest reactions. I would expect it. I would have expected, to be honest, a, a bigger move. A bigger move in the FTSE. Uh, you know, the FTSE again, with 37 points up, 27 points up in Germany, and uh, the US is now back in positive territory. So the only rationale behind that is that the old quantitative easing stuff, that 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 must be market speculators saying that that's no way we're going to cut any more. You know, quantitative easing is going to be around for the foreseeable future. That's the only reason why I can see a bounce in these stocks. Yes, I think hats off to Mark. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, I'm, I live in a tax haven. I've always lived in tax havens. I've lived in Gibraltar. I've lived in Jersey. You know, that's what. Why else do you think I do these kind of things? You know, it's it is. You know, it's a nice place to live. Anyway, so. The figure like that can't help but think the market is going to digest and take a big direction. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on Alan, uh, with you on that, Alan. That's, that's definitely still more money to come, absolutely. Okay, so um, is the pound a seller or buy right now? Well, it's, it's looking like a buy, to be honest. So if we close significantly above that 50% mark, then, you know, maybe we'll see a buy. D difficult to say, to be honest. With such a change in direction of going down and going up, then you know you're going to have to see some consolidation period. So to be honest, I'd stay away from the pound right now. Uh, that'd be my advice to you. Okay, guys, any anything else? Anything else we'd like to ask? Um, again, I don't want to just keep you all listening to me droning on. You know, we've made our money. We've made the live market calls. You know, that's that's my job. That's what I'm here to do. You know, I'm. I'm 
hopefully, you know, you 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 stayed in the the trades you did a little bit longer by having the confidence, you know, to listen to me and for for me, you know, staying in. I mean, again, it's it's very difficult. I, I don't know how I sound, how I sound. I never listen to my recordings. But all I can do is, is in real time tell you what the market's doing, tell you my opinion, and, and sometimes that's all you need just to know that that's a terrible figure that the stock markets will have to sell off, and no matter what you do, you know you don't get out, you know, for a loss when you know you're right and you have to hold on. I mean, look at this FTSE bouncing back in the five minutes. We've already taken, you know, 50% of these gains back. So all that can mean is that um, quantitative easing it will be the next topic, and that will bore the bore me to death, unfortunately. But that's all that we're going to talk about now is, is quantitative easing. You know, they're not going to taper now, and that's the only reason why we're seeing a bid back into the indices. Oh, yes, chaotic but profitable. Yeah, okay. Um, I don't know. I don't know how else to do these sessions, guys. I mean, I don't know anybody else that can sit here and make money live and, and, and talk you through multiple markets and, uh, uh, you know, and, and make money and give you reasons why these things happen. It, it's hard. Not many people can do it, and I may not be the best of it in the world, but, you know, again, I've, I've proved that you can look at multiple time frames, you can look at multiple markets and, and make money based upon your technical view and your fundamental understanding. So I've made money in two markets today. You know, some people have made amazing money. Um, you know, 25 grand is, is, is amazing. Um, so it, it's all good from my perspective. If, if there's anything else you want to see me do, guys, or any way you want me to approach it in a different way, send me an email. Just let me know. Um, I've done nearly 35 non-farm payrolls and I've only ever lost money once. So, you know, I'm not, I can't really break a winning formula, to be honest. Listen, guys, for me, I think that's danger territory. I'm going to be looking at what happens in gold. If gold spikes up further, I'll be looking for some sells around 1251. I'm not going to touch the indices for now, and I'll certainly stay away from the pound. Uh, my advice to you is the market's trading pretty much you know, nearly where it, where it was this morning. So it's taken on that, 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 that taken all the gains from the bulls, taking all the all, all the all the gains from the bears, and we're pretty much you know, back in the in mid range. So anything could happen in the markets from this point. Okay, guys. Well, listen. You know, uh, if you can always do me a favour, uh, if you you know can share my my sessions on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, again, if you if you just like comments that I see on on LinkedIn, anywhere you can follow me and help promote me. You know, please do that. The bigger numbers we have, the more power I have to do things into Trader. Plenty more interesting things. Um, uh, they'll be available for myself um, in the coming uh, in the coming months. You'll 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 be able to um, you know get more support from me on um, on, on webinars and uh, there'll be some uh, some interesting products I'm going to be releasing that you can uh, use for yourself. So spread the good word. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it and made some money. Beers are on mark and uh, uh, have a great uh, afternoon, guys. And, and and be safe. And if you bank your money, make sure you keep hold of it. All right, guys. Listen, have a great afternoon. It's been a pleasure. Take it easy.